Uh, thank you so much. Uh, as mentioned by Sheila, this study is uh, is a collaboration with uh, with colleagues from the University of Hawaii, from the Institute of Labor Economics, uh, Tim Halde and Teresa Molina. And this is part of a story of a series of research that I'm doing uh, about um, health in the Philippines, about particularly on social health insurance and how it impacts uh, welfare of people in the Philippines. Uh, next slide, please. So we know that over the last decade, we have given a lot of uh, uh, free stuff. Well, for, for many of our uh, people, for our population. So we've given free health insurance, free education, uh, free pension. And so a big part of that is free health insurance. And part of that story is because we've got these uh, big endowment from the 2012 sin tax law. So after 2012, we got this big bump on primary membership in our field health. And that is largely driven by the number of indirect members, some of your sponsored members, indigents, uh, senior citizens. Uh, and uh, next slide, please. Part of this is because we want as a society to have health for all. And part of that story is that uh, for the longest time, we've been trying to push down new out-of-pocket health expenditures uh, to go down. So kasama yan dun sa ating uh, Field Health Law, uh, National Health Insurance Law in 1995 and eventually uh, when it was uh, updated. So with the end view of quality assurance, increased benefits and reduced out-of-pocket expenditure. So usually ganito yung uh, tenor ng discussion when we talk about social health insurance and why we need field health uh, in our lives as Filipinos. Uh, next slide. Uh, and for the most part, uh, we did several studies on how this has impacted uh, some parts of our population. So in 2019, we have another study looking at how for peace, and because of when you're for peace, automatically covered green on field health, uh, ano yung impact nun sa um, access to healthcare and dun sa health expenditures ng mga bata, mga mahihirap na bata. And what we found is that uh, it induced greater hospital visits for both preventive and curative care, uh, and one of that uh, one of that uh, impact that we estimated is that uh, yung isang mahirap na bata na mayroong sakit, pag meron siyang insurance kasi meron siyang four piece, um, mas malaki yung chance niya na pumunta, magpakita sa hospital sa isang healthcare practitioner by 25 percentage points. That's quite big. And another part of the story is that uh meron kang field health, lowers out of pocket health expenditures among poor children. So we've documented that. Uh, and the other part of the story, so mula bata, yung mga matatanda naman. Next slide. So yung around 2010, 2013, uh, nilibre natin yung mga kasama doon yung mga, mga batang mga uh, But in 2010, ginawa rin natin yun for the elderly. So we granted additional benefit to senior citizens, including mandatory flood coverage, to all indigent senior citizens. Indigents lang. Mga mahihirap na mga senior citizens in 2010. But eventually in 2014, uh, kinover na niya lahat ng senior citizens. In 2010, uh, Medyo hindi hindi pa siya ganun nag expand uh, and part of part of that is maybe because this is funded by the LGUs. So kung may para LGUs, they can fund uh, they can sponsor the field health uh, coverage of senior citizens. But in 2014, after the sin tax law, uh, yung pang mga hindi kasama wala pang field health na senior citizens uh, they were covered uh, through sin through ano uh, through taxes that were uh, generated from sin tax law. Next slide, please. Uh, so, so, why is it important to 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 look at uh, senior citizens and how they got a uh, field? Well, one part is that uh, on on the one hand, we want everyone to have access to healthcare and having health insurance uh, facilities that access to healthcare. But then, on the other hand, the Philippines is aging, as mentioned by Dr. Arbeta earlier. Uh, so, um, in the next. Uh, Decade, we would be an aging, popula aging population, and another generation would be an aging population. And with, uh, and kung parating natin yung libre, kung libre yung uh, health insurance na ma mas matatanda, and usually mas, ma mas mahal uh, yung healthcare na matatanda, uh, then that would mean, uh, papaano natin babayaran? Sinong gubayad niyan? Uh, will there be enough? Pag, marami ng, pag sobra ng marami matatanda, will there be enough workers to pay for their uh, health insurance? 
Eh, but, but sino ba yung matatanda in the first place? So on average, this is based on the uh, 2018 Family Income and Spending Survey by the PSA. They are less likely from poor household. They have, usually have higher income and expenditure per capita. Bakit? Because they survived into old age. So ibig sabihin nun, kung nag-survive sila into old age, they are usually better endowed when they are younger. So better yung health care nila, better yung education nila. And through these periods from, from their working sa, sa prime age nila, no pagtanda nila, they are able to accumulate wealth, which they are able to use when, when they become senior citizens. But then, not all elderly are alike. We know uh, from the literature, from data, that uh, mas malaki yung inequality among older than younger population. So kahit on average, mas mayayaman sila, we have these, uh, these uh, elderly na hindi maganda at hindi, na, mas, hindi nakaka-access ng healthcare services. Next slide, please. This count, dito, dito pumapasok yung study. Uh, we want to answer essentially three simple questions. Una, how did the expanded senior citizens act affect insurance coverage for elderly Filipinos? Who was impacted by the expansion? And how did insurance coverage affect medical expenditures and utilization? So, simply lang yung mga tanong na gusto namin sa uh, Next question. Uh, next slide. So, kung ito yung last slide makita nyo, uh, for this presentation, ito yung pinaka-importante essentially. What we found was that uh, the Expanded Senior Citizens Act increased social health insurance coverage by 10 to 20 percentage points. That's quite huge. Uh, those who were affected tend to be middle class, family, and in some dimensions, they are high, utili uh, high utilizers, suggesting adverse selection uh, into insurance. And contrary to expectations, sabi natin as a policy, we want to lower out-of-pocket expenditures. But here, what we found was that out-of-pocket medical expenditures increased by over 100%, driven by non-covered uh, expenditure categories, so outpatient services and medicines. And what we found is that the evidence is consistent with outward shift in medical care demand. So, uh, mas intensive yung margin, uh, uh, mas malaki yung intensive margin effects. So, uh, later, I will discuss. Uh, there's also an increase in chronic disease diagnosis, and this is consistent with studies elsewhere in other studies. Now, when uh, they provided social health insurance, uh, instead of mobile uh, out of pocket expenditures, actually, mas tomasya. Okay, so ito na yung details ng study. Next slide, please. So to be able to do yung mga estimation, uh, we we use yung expanded senior citizens act as a natural experiment to study the, the impact of health insurance coverage among the elderly. So we did difference and difference. Uh, we exploit yung characteristics nung, nung, nung batas na, uh, dahil sa batas na to, nung 2014, kung ikaw ay 60 years old and over, meron kang biglang uh, instant coverage ng field health insurance. So, and we use this uh, as eligibility as instrumental variable for insurance coverage. The technical details I would not uh, discuss further, but it's uh, available in the published report as shown by Sheila Kanina. Next slide. So, for this, we used uh, representative sample surveys from pre and post ESCA legislation. So, you annual poverty indicator survey from 2014 and 20, for 2014-2016, the National Demographic and Health Survey for 2013-2017, both uh, from the, by the Philippine Statistics Authority. Next slide, please. So for first question, um, how, did expanded se how did the Expanded Senior Citizens Act affect insurance coverage for elderly Filipinos? Next slide. So I will show you uh, four panel, two panels, uh, four graphs. Um, first panel eh, yung using APIs, the, yung sa right hand would be from the Demographic and Health Survey. Uh, yung sa APIs, we are looking at primary members. Ito yung actually nakaregister dun sa, 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 PSA, sa PhilHealth. And then your right, ito yung covered by PhilHealth. So both primary members and their dependents. Medyo magkaiba yung, uh, yung numbers sa gilid kasi mas malaki yung, syempre, yung kasama yung dependents. But what you would see, next slide, is that in 2014, 2013, uh, this is before the Expanded Senior Citizens Act Amendment, uh, yung threshold na 60 years old, yung pro proportion of those who are covered or those who are primary members of PhilHealth, smooth siya. So, para lang siyang, ano, diretso lang siya, wala, walang, uh, walang, ang tawag dito? Walang uh, bump dun sa, dun sa threshold na yun. So, as you, pag naglagay ka ng linya dyan, diretso lang siya. 
But here comes after the the amendment in 2014, 2016 uh, for APIS and 2017 and DHS. Next slide. You would see that a uh, rather small bump uh, at age 60. So from 50, so if you look at yung sa APIS, around 35% uh, of, of people who are aged 59 are, ano, ha, has been, uh, uh, have feel health. Pero pag itin ng 60, merong ano, may discontinuity, tumaas siya by about uh, 10, 10 uh, percentage points. And in our estimation, what we find is about 10 to 20 percent, uh, 20 percentage points depending uh, on the specification. So, uh, yung expanded use of has actually increased uh, field health coverage uh, among the population. Uh, next slide, please. So, next question is, who was impacted by the expansion? Sino yung 10, 20 percentage points na ito na increase dun sa field health coverage? Next slide. So, this is an important question kasi yung impact estimates namin, yung ano yung epekto niya dun sa mga tao, uh, which will be answered in the next question, uh, refers to, ed to the elderly population who are induced into having insurance coverage because of, S of the Senior Citizens Act. Nagkaroon siya ng field health kasi na-cover siya nung, nung expanded senior, senior Citizens Act. These are what we call the compliers. Uh, but the compliers cannot be identified directly. Hindi mo makita yung tao at sabihin mong complier siya. But what we can do is to have their average characteristics uh, identified uh, based on some technique. And this is important uh, for, from a policy perspective. Kasi ang gusto natin, uh, yung kaya maka-afford ng insurance, they should pay. And those who are not able to cover, uh, we should pay for them. So, so ganun ba yung nangyari? So, the idea is that we use the... Uh, Spanish Senior Citizens Act as a natural experiment, so meron tayong pre, post, and we have uh, age eligibility, and this allows us to identify the average characteristics of the always takers. Ito yung mga tao na meron mga Senior Citizens Act na wala, meron silang feel health. The always takers, and then treat and compliers, ito yung sinabi ng compliers kanina na, na walang feel health. Then we have the treated compliers, yung nagka-feel health, Kasi dahil sa Senior Citizens Act and the Never Takers and the Never Takers. Itong Never Takers, offeran mo man, uh, na-cover man sila Senior Citizens Act, hindi sila, wala silang insurance. And this allows us to back up the average characteristics of the compliers. So, kaya natin characterize, sino ba itong mga compliers nito? So, yung details, yung uh, technical details are also available in the published report. So, next slide. So, sino yung mga compliers natin? Ano yung characteristics nila? Next slide. Uh, first, uh, next slide please. Uh, first, they are less likely male. They are more likely female. So, yung mga graphs, ito yung proportion ng male. Itong first uh, column, proportion ng male dun sa data. So, the, who are always takers, compliers, never takers. And then the average. Okay, and as you can see, uh, around 60%, uh, around 60% are female dun sa mga compliers. In the next slide, you would see naman, uh, not they are more likely middle class by education or income uh, or income and wealth. Bakit? Next slide. This, these results are not uh, surprising. Una, they are more likely female because males are more likely continuously employed during their prime age and therefore they are covered by field health uh, and if they provided enough for in, to field health, uh, they would be part of lifetime membership program. So pag retire nila, they're part of the lifetime membership program, hindi sila kasama dun sa na-induce nung amended Senior Citizens Act. And we know from the data that female labor force participation is only around 50% compared with 70% uh, plus for males. And that females exit from the labor force, usually this is timed with childbearing uh, based on uh, other studies. And females may be covered as dependents uh, even before the senior citizen, expanded Senior Citizens Act. Uh, but these are not automatic. Kailangan mong enroll siya as a dependent. And they're slightly less generous with additional dependents. So kung mas marami kang dependents, mag-share sila dun sa benefit ng dependents. So pag mas marami, mas maliit yung benefit. And they are more likely middle class. Bakit? Because yung poor, uh, even before the Senior Citizens Act uh, expansion, the amendment, they're automatically covered through the four Ps under field health sponsored programs. Yung naman mayayaman, they are more likely covered through direct contribution, kaya nila magbayad ng field health. And they, eventually, they would eventually graduate to lifetime membership upon retirement. So, uh, yung gusto natin targetin, yung mga walang field health, 
uh, over the course of their lifetime, sila naman yung compliers dito sa ating uh, program. Next slide, please. So, yung ating uh, complier analysis can, can be also used for selection into program. So, uh, this is a big question in, in insurance. Kasi ang gusto natin, uh, lahat nakakukuha ng insurance. Kasi, uh, well, this is a question. Are those who are more likely to use insurance more likely to obtain insurance coverage? Kasi kung ikaw yung... Kung ang, la, kung ang karamihan ng kumukuha ng insurance ay yung may mga sakit at yung cost ng healthcare ay hinahati lang naman sa mga, sa mga tao na babayad ng insurance, din ibig sabihin pag mas likely na magkaroon ng insurance yung may sakit, tataas yung cost ng insurance eventually. And eventually, uh, sobrang mahal na siya, wala na makapagbayad ng insurance. So gusto natin, uh, walang adverse selection into insurance. And one way to do that is to have a universal uh, health insurance coverage na lahat magbabayad. Lahat would be able to contribute uh, to that uh, system. So next slide. So we used the same technique to identify meron bang uh, adverse selection dito sa ating social health insurance, sa ating field health. So next slide. Sabi natin yung always takers, they will always have insurance even without the expanded senior citizens act. So yung, yung they're likely na mas mataas yung kanilang health expenditures, mas mataas yung kanilang hospital stay, mas mataas yung kanilang pag-visit uh, sa health facility. Sa next slide, uh, this group, you always takers and treated compliers, this group has insurance coverage. Kasi part of that, always takers and treated compliers would have insurance through uh, Senior Citizens Act. Uh, the increase um, uh, in health expenditures and in health facility use may be due to the combined effect of insurance coverage and adverse selection. So, uh, pwedeng dahil sa insurance coverage, pwede adverse selection. Hindi natin ma-rule out na hindi natin masabi, ma-pinpoint na adverse selection siya. Pero yung, yung last, next na slide, yung never takers and the compliers, itong mga taong to, wala sila insurance coverage. But what we see is that uh, they, they are likely to have uh, longer, uh, more likely to have hospital stay in the last year, uh, which may be an indication of adverse selection into insurance coverage. <coughs> So, meron, meron ganong issue sa ating field health uh, that is highlighted uh, with the use of uh, the Expanded Senior Citizens Act um, as a natural experiment. Next slide, please. So, yung last na tanong, how did insurance coverage affect uh, medical expenditures and utilization? Yung gusto natin sana, uh, when you have insurance coverage, mas mababa na yung out-of-pocket mo, di ba? Kasi makakover na no field health. Uh, yung expenditures natin. Ang gusto natin, dahil meron ka insurance coverage, yung mga tao, they are more likely to go uh, visit a hospital if needed or to have their health checks at least once a year. Next slide, please. So, ganito yung idea ng ginawa namin. Uh, the idea is the same uh, nung kaninang graph na pinakita ko na before the Senior Citizens Act Amendment in 2014, dapat wala tayong makitang break uh, doon sa expenditures or kung anumang outcome yung titignan natin uh, at age 60 kasi ibig sabihin na ito wala pang, wala pang ibang ano wala pang ibang mechanism that would uh, that would justify such break kasi wala namang program at that time that pertains to health insurance pero after 2014 we uh, sana meron uh, and that would signify that, that would give you an estimate of the impact of the Senior Citizens Act uh, on field health coverage and eventually on, on these outcomes, in this case, uh, medical expenditures. Uh, yung estimate na, na papakita ko sa inyo, these are for compliers. So ito yung impact dun sa mga tao na nagkaroon ng insurance dahil sa Senior Citizens Act uh, expansion in 2014. Next slide, please. So these are the results. Uh, Ang hahanapin nyo dyan sa taas, uh, yung ano ba yung outcome? So, log health expenditure, health expenditure share, outpatient expenditure, inpatient expenditure, medical exp product expenditures. Yung bandwidth na 5 or 10, these are just uh, age groups. Uh, ilang ilang age, anong, mga, anong age group yung sinama namin sa estimation? So, pag 5, this would be from age uh, 56 to 59, and then from 60 to 64. Eh, pag 10, so ganun lang, 10 to the left and the right dun sa ating uh, 60 years old na cut-off. So pag may star, ibig sabihin niya statistically significant, tapos kung 
uh, hindi na ako siya doon particular doon sa number, but I would just say na positive or negative yung impact. So PhilHealth, what, based on this table, what we found is that PhilHealth coverage increased out-of-pocket health expenditures among elderly compliers uh, due to increased expenditures for outpatient care. So, and medyo hindi siya well developed as the inpatient care but what we found here is that uh, although wala siyang impact dun sa inpatient care uh, it's not statistically significant pero yung outpatient care tumaas siya dahil tumaas yung expenditures for for medical products and for medicines now these are not the the, the services and products that are not usually covered uh, by field health next slide please so, sa healthcare utilization naman, uh, we found uh, some evidence of increased healthcare utilization, particularly particularly for hospitalization. Medyo thin na yung sample natin dito, okay? increased natin into to five, 15 years. So, medyo umabot pa siya, although the impact is quite huge at 20, uh, additional 20 percentage points relative to the average 17% na before uh, Senior Citizens Act. So, tumaas yung, yung probability na magstay yung isang uh, senior citizens sa hospital because of the expanded senior citizens act. Next slide please. So sabi natin kanina when, when I was starting the presentation, uh, ang usual goal natin is to have uh, is to lower out of uh, pocket expenditures. But here we found na actually yung field health yung ESCA increased OP expenditures, and this is due to uh, increased yung expenditures, and this is unexpected and maybe disconcerting uh, to some. So we want to tease out, bakit ba tumaas yung out-of-pocket expenditures dahil sa field health coverage? Next slide, please. So, ano yung posibleng mechanism? So, one thing that we're uh, thinking was that baka yung mga matatanda uh, when they, when they are almost uh, 60 years old, they withhold going to to uh, going to health facilities, uh, seeking health care. Kasi pagdating nila ng 60, magkakaroon na sila ng health insurance. But when we look at the data, this that explanation uh, is not consistent with the data. Kasi in 2014, we found that uh, between 2014 and 2016, we found that there's lower health expenditures across all age groups uh, from 2014 to 2016. And yung uh, pinakamalaking bagsak was actually in their late 50s. Kung ikaw maghihintay ka ng healthcare, siguro baka paghihintay ka ng isa dalawang taon for your health insurance. Pero yung five years, parang medyo masyadong malayo na yun para isipin na magkakaroon ako ng health insurance when I turn 60, so hindi mo na ako magpapakita sa doktor ngayong 55 ako. So, uh, hindi, hindi, siguro hindi ito yung rason. So, next slide, please. Uh, another mechanism that we're looking at is that Maybe yung mga yung increased utilization actually leads to greater point of care enrollment in field health. So as sabi natin kanina, yung field health uh, res, field health coverage resulted to greater out of pocket expenditures. Ang sinasabi rito, baka pag pumunta ako sa hospital, mas malaki yung mas malaki at nalaman kung pwede ako mag-enroll sa health sa field health, dun magpapa-enroll ako. So uh, makikita ko sa data yung mga nag-enroll kasi pumunta sa hospital. Uh, and when we look at the data, this is also unlikely kasi yung point of care enrollment uh, of field health remains a small program of our social health insurance. So even with the unlikely chance that all point of care enrollees are senior citizens, uh, this constitute only about 1% of all senior citizens covered by field health. So, so maliit lang siya. And even we, if we take that into account in our estimates, maliit lang yung magiging uh, change do sa point estimate natin on the impact on out of pocket expenditures. So baka hindi ito yung mechanism. And plus, yung senior citizens, uh, they are more likely to enroll when they get their senior citizens card because they can, you can also get their field health coverage, your, your field health membership, uh, kasabay na, uh, isang office na lang sila. Okay, so baka hindi ito yung hinahatatin na, ano, na mechanism kung bakit gano'n nung bakit tumas yung out-of-pocket expenditures because of field health coverage. Next slide, please. Yung last na may natinig lang is maybe because uh, tumas naman talaga yung ano, nagpakita sa doktor. And we look at uh, 
yung diagnosis these are ano uh, stated diagnosis ng mga ng mga tao ng sa demographic ng health survey so what we found was that uh, those who are age 6 and older uh, in 2017 mas mataas yung nagsabi na uh, meron silang chronic condition mas mataas yung nagsabi na meron silang hypertension and uh, historically, we know that uh, chronic disease diagnosis is low due to severe underdiagnosis. So, for instance, in our data, dun sa demographic and health survey, we found that hypertension, ang tanda, ang sabi nila, uh, 5% lang sa kanila yung meron hypertension. Uh, but estimates uh, uh, from the DOST, uh, what we found was that about 35 to 40% ng privilege siya sa Pilipinas. So, severely underdiagnosed yung chronic disease sa Pilipinas. And maybe kaya tumaas yung out of pocket expenditures uh, because because now they have feel health they have increased contact with the healthcare system. Uh, mas malaki yung chance na mag-diagnose nila ng tama and because the diagnosis nila ng tama yung out of pocket nila out of pocket expenditures nila are actually complementary services ng pag-diagnose nila so yung outpatient care, medicines and these uh these services, these clues, are largely not covered by field health. Because for the most part, a field, uh, inpatient care, the well-developed uh, component of our national health insurance program. Next slide, please. So, so we were talking about uh, compliers, the mga na induce na magkaroon ng health insurance because of the Senior Citizens Act. So, can we say something about the always takers and never takers? And actually, we do. Uh, based on a next slide, please, on a new technique uh, uh, that was published in 2017, uh, which we use in our paper. So, although, kumakita nyo, these are the impact on total out of pocket expenditures. Uh, so, we have always takers, compliers, never takers, IV. This, this, this is the estimate that I showed you earlier. Uh, mukha naman sila magkakapareho when you test it. Na, uh, we cannot say na magkakaiba yung impact sa always takers, compliers, and never takers. But if you focus on the point estimates uh, na sila lang, we can see na mas malaki ang impact ng total ng uh, field, health, ng field health coverage sa never takers at medyo mas maliit lang sa always takers, which we would expect since your never takers would have uh, no insurance. Uh, and sila yung more likely na mag-benefit uh, from having uh, insurance coverage. Next slide, please. So, balik ako sa key takeaways ng study. And this is uh, just to summarize the result, the, the rest of the presentation. First, we found that the Expanded Senior Citizens Act increased social health insurance coverage by 10 to 20 percentage points, which is a good thing. And we found that compliers tend to be middle class, female, and in some dimensions, high utilizers. So middle class and female, this is a good thing because they, they are covered usually in field health uh, in the, during their prime age. But the adverse selection uh, part is medyo, medyo, a medyo may issue. Tayo dyan, dyan. Uh, and finally, uh, last Two slides, yung uh, last two bullets. Contrary to expectations, yung out-of-pocket medical expenditures increased by over 100%, driven by non-covered expenditure categories. And as I've shown earlier, that is this uh, this is uh, consistent with outward shift in medical care demand. Mas lumaki yung demand ng mga tao uh, for health insurance, for, for health services because of field health coverage. And last slide, please. Uh, implications for policy. So we've seen an increase in insurance coverage and uh, insurance, we see here that the increase in insurance coverage can lead to increase in out-of-pocket expenditures that may be contrary to policy uh, uh, intentions. But uh, I can say that this is not necessarily counterproductive since this may be the result of increased contact with the health system leading to better diagnosis, which may be overall welfare improving, or with complementarities with non-covered services, which suggest that elderly are willing to pay, for, uh, pay it for themselves. Uh, important dito, that we need to ensure that increased expenditures reflect the use of necessary care. Na kaya lang sila nasa hospital kasi kailangan nila yun. At, uh, and this is, uh, this is something that they need actually uh, for their health. 
And that healthcare providers are not charging higher prices uh, to insure patients na dahil alam nila na meron silang feel that they are more likely to use their uh, healthcare services na hindi nila i-jack up yung prices or that they will not pass this cost to other patient groups. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you so much.